Hey there, my name is Leah and today is Tuesday so that means it is time for Get Ready With Murder on my channel. Get Ready With Murder is a weekly series where I will tell you a true crime story while I'm getting ready for today. Alright, are you guys ready for the werewolf killers? I don't know if I am. As a young adult, and honestly if we're gonna be truthful, to now, I enjoy some fiction that includes supernatural things like werewolves and vampires, etc. So I don't know if my poor little 13 year old heart is ready for the story of the werewolf killers but we'll move forward. Today, as usual, I will not be discussing the products that I'm using. I'll just show you what I have and they'll, of course, all be in the description box below. So I am going to take you to the small town of, oh, Medicine Hat, Canada. In Medicine Hat, it's a pretty small town and we are going to start with a lovely young girl named Jasmine Richardson. Um, growing up, she was pretty typical girl, you know, everyone said she was very social, very outgoing, um, got along with everyone, just an all around nice girl. When she was 11, she discovered goth culture. Um, and when she found this, she kind of found her home. This was definitely her niche. Um, you know, it's like when you find that thing that you love and you know that there's other people out there that find that, this was that for her. However, being from a small town, you know, there weren't that many people who were also into like goth culture and vampires and werewolves and um, just that kind of thing. So she went online. She became a regular on vampirefreaks.com, which I kind of love that title. It's like, you know exactly what you're getting, you know who's going to be there and you know that they're your people and they're your people. Um, so she kind of found her niche in that situation and ended up um, starting to date someone who was also into that, but he was about 11 years older than her. So she was 12 and he was 23 when they first started dating, which we all know is extremely problematic and um, not gonna be a healthy relationship at all. The person that Jasmine started dating, his name was Jeremy Steinke and um, he was a troubled person. Uh, he had not a great upbringing. He had an alcoholic abusive mother. He had a stepfather that was kind of awful. Um, so by the time he was 13, he also found and was really into goth culture. But he was also that person who as a young person, not only coming from an abusive family, also was like picked on and bullied at school. Because anybody who's gone to school with goth kids, um, knows that they're probably not treated super great by the other students in the school. So as kind of a way of coping, he created a persona that, you know, he said that he was a 300 year old vampire and would start wearing, you know, vials of blood around his neck and um, just kind of to put everybody else off. He's owned being different and being, you know, goth. So fast forward years uh, where Jeremy becomes a 23 year old adult and Jasmine is born really and grows up to also be into goth culture and they find each other. When Jasmine's parents found out about this of course they were having absolutely none of it and demanded that they not speak to or see each other again because a 12 year old girl has absolutely no business hanging out with a 23 year old adult man even if he is a 300 year old werewolf. So because it was 2006 uh, everyone had a blog that they shared way too much information on. Um, Jeremy wrote the following on it, which became evidence later on. Uh, this was April 3rd, 2006. Payment! Exclamation point. My lover's rents are totally unfair. They say they really care. They don't know what's going on, just assume. Their throats I want to slit. Finally, there shall be silence. Their blood shall be payment. And 20 days later, Jasmine's parents were murdered in their home on April 23rd of 2006. The following day, um, a neighbor boy who was friends with Jasmine's younger brother had gone over to the house to see if he wanted to come out and play, but he said he looked in the window and he saw bodies lying in the basement, ran home, told his parents, and they called the police. Um, when the police arrived, they also looked in the window and saw the bodies in the basement. Um, they thought that maybe someone would be alive, so they broke in to try to save somebody, but it turns out the entire family was dead 
um, and Jasmine, the 12 year old daughter, was missing. So both parents and the young um, eight year old boy were both murdered, or all three murdered. At this point, police were not even looking at Jasmine as a suspect. They um, kind of assumed that she had been abducted um, by whoever murdered these people. Uh, they started looking into it a little bit further. They noticed that the uh, parents had been stabbed multiple times. So they knew that this was a really personal attack and kind of a crime of passion. Um, so then they started to look around a little bit more at their life and they found things about Jasmine and Jeremy. At first, they of course looked at Jeremy as the prime suspect, and then they found some email exchanges between the two that um, kind of proved it was Jasmine's idea the whole time. Shortly after her parents forced them to break up, this was an email that she wrote to Jeremy. It begins with me killing them and ends with me living with you. Um, to which he was, you know, all for, he said, I love your plan, but we need more details. And from there on, they basically planned out the murder of her entire family so she could go and live with her 300-year-old werewolf forever and ever. So of course they were arrested and brought to trial. During their trial, Jasmine tried to say that it was just hypothetical, that she was just mad at her parents, and she didn't actually mean it. Um, however, they had witnesses come forward during the trial that said that they both were bragging about how they had killed her parents, that they, you know, used phrases like gutted like a fish. But it does seem that Jeremy did the actual physical act of killing the family, um, which I guess makes sense because she was a 12 year old girl. It's not like she had much strength that she could really, you know, take down her parents and stab them multiple times until they died. Other evidence that was brought forth was, of course, their email exchanges, which I guess got pretty detailed as far as what was going to happen that night, um, how they were going to do it, and when, uh, which was pretty much exactly the timeline of what happened. So with all of that information and the uh, witnesses that came forth, they were both found guilty. They were both convicted of three counts of first degree murder. Jeremy was given a sentence of life in prison without opportunity for parole for 25 years and because Jasmine was a minor she got off a little easier so because she was 13 when she was convicted she ended up with a six-year jail sentence and then a four-year uh, supervision sentence which I guess was the maximum you could give a minor at that time as of now, Jasmine has served her sentence and undergone uh, a lot of psychiatric work, I guess, while she's been in the system. She was diagnosed with conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I think from the name we can kind of guess. And she was released from prison in 2016 when she was a year younger than Jeremy was when they actually committed these crimes. So when she was released, this was part of the statement that was pulled from those records. The judge said to her, you've indicated through your conduct, you have a desire to atone for what you did. Clearly you cannot undo your past. You only live each day with the knowledge that you can control how you behave. And with that, she was sent on her way. And that my friends is the story of the werewolf killer. I wanna know what you guys think about this story. I think it's just, sad all around. Um, two young people basically have been changed for life. Jeremy is going to be in prison forever. Jasmine's out of prison but she's, you know, alone. She doesn't have any family anymore. But while it is said that she seems to be very remorseful for what she did, I do think that there is something to the point of when you're 11 and 12 you have no concept of the future. Everyone goes through I hate my parents and uh, I wish they were dead and I wish I could get away from here but not everyone acts on that. Um, so I guess, I don't know, but then again, not everyone has a 23 year old influence helping them carry things out either. Just all around, it's a sad story. And then there's another facet of it that's just kind of sad to me, um, is that it really casts a light on the goth community as people who are, you know, bloodthirsty, think that they're vampires, drink each other's bloods, think that they're werewolves and they can kill people, when in actuality that is not true for even 99% of the community. Um, 
a lot of them are people that just have different interests than other people, um, different interests than the norm, and it's hard for people outside that community to kind of grasp what they're really doing. Um, they're just people with different interests, like you're a cat person, you're a dog person, I like makeup, you like cross-stitching. Um, everybody's got their thing and it's unfortunate that something like this kind of sheds that even worse light on a community that's really not understood well. Let me know your thoughts on this whole thing in the comments below or if you know any more information that I got from the research that I did today, I would love to hear it, especially if you're in Canada and you know more than I do. All right, you guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. There is a new Get Ready With Murder every single week. Have a super great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, 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 bye.